Hey everyone, Morgan here. So I just wanted to have a quick discussion about gas masks. So here are a few things about gas masks. I've been looking into them a lot lately. Um, so what we have right now, the only sort of masks that we have are, are these N95 masks. Now these will work perfect for uh, you know bacteria, all that kind of stuff. It'll work great for any of that kind of stuff. Um, you can also get the respirator ones, um, but uh, this is actually recommended by the Urban Prepper. I know he does you know extensive research, and I also did my research on this kind of stuff, and this just seemed like the best option. I got a whole box of this. Um, so, you know, when it comes to just masks and things, we have this, plus you also have like a shemog if you're ever in a situation where you're around a lot of um, uh, smoke or tear gas or something. I have heard um, that, you know, just putting like a bandana, a wet bandana is even better, just around your nose, it can help protect a little bit, but there's no seal like what this has. And also, um, I've also heard that uh, apple cider vinegar on a mask works. You know, these are just things that I've kind of looked at. But this is not for like nuclear kind of stuff. It's not for anything like that. Now, when we're talking about um, nuclear stuff, um, gas masks, you know, like military gas masks are going to be um, what you're going to need. Um, if you're in any sort of proximity. Now, when we're thinking about gas masks, you have to think this is not a long-term solution, okay? You're not just gonna be wandering around with a gas mask the rest of your life, okay? The gas mask is to be used in which you're going to put the gas mask on and then you are going to get away from the situation in which you have to put the gas mask on, okay? So let's say you live like a, near a nuclear plant or something, okay? And it's, you know, it's, it's it's melting down, okay? It's, you know, radiation, it's going into the air, falling down to the ground, whatever, okay? Um, you put the gas mask on and then you leave the area. You get like 100 miles. A lot of people say 50 miles away. I say 100 at least. But as you're going, you know, there's a certain point in which you can take the gas mask off or whatever. Also, in saying that, you should know where your nuclear plants are, um, near you, you know, those are gonna be a, a big threat to you. If you live within, I would say, 100 miles of a nuclear plant, you really want to be prepared for, um, you know, uh, radiological type events. So uh, just be aware of that. I'm gonna put a link down below to where you can actually go um, find a map of that. Anyway, um, gas masks themselves are not expensive, okay? Now there are expensive ones, of course. There are like, uh, I think they're, I've seen some for like $250, I think, but those are like the super primo, yeah. Um, but there are gas masks like the Israel, Israeli ones, the Russian ones, those you can get anywhere from like $15 to $30 shipped from eBay and it comes with a filter. Now, speaking of filters, the filters themselves I've seen, you can get for them for like, what, 15 or $20 for six filters. And those six, uh, those filter, the one filter I have heard can last up to eight hours. Okay, some people say just a few hours. Um, I have heard that they will last up to eight hours. The, now these are mostly for adults. They do have some for children and the children, I think the ages were seven, it was seven or eight. Seven or eight to like 15 are the children masks and then they can go up to an adult mask. But anyway, um, they're made to, you know, go nice and tight against your head to strap down and then it has the um, filter down here. It looks very typical to a gas mask. Well, some of the gas masks actually have a little water um, hook in. Um, anyway, so a couple of things on the children masks. My daughter is... 11 and a half months old right now. There is nothing for, okay, 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 wait. <laughs> there is one thing that I have seen for infants and toddlers up to the six, up to the, you know, seven or eight years old. Um, it's this like dome thing that like, it goes all the way around their body and like it just sucks and sucks, suction cups around them and it does pressurize air to keep stuff out. 
it's this just huge, I'm gonna put a picture over here or something to where you can kind of see it, but it's this huge thing that goes around them and that's literally the only thing that's available. It's $300 for that, plus it's like $30 per filter or uh, it, I don't think it's per filter, and, and it runs on batteries. So you need the, the extra filter or a filter and extra filters, um, and you need batteries, extra batteries. I don't know how long the actual batteries last or whatever. Anyway, there's all these little minute things, okay? And plus, we have two dogs. How are we gonna protect our dogs? Now, I have seen one thing, it's been like this, uh, it's like this crate thing, that you can um, like put the dog in. And again, it's kind of like the baby bubble. <laughs> uh, it has pressurized air, air, and now you have to carry around this big ass crate with your dogs in it to protect them. Um, again, that's very expensive. I think, I think that was like $500. I could be wrong. I think it was more expensive than that. I'm gonna have to double check. Um, but, you know, so again, we're going back to gas masks. I'm really torn about the aspect of having a gas mask. I'm not sure if it's like a thousand percent something that I want to do. If I can only protect me and my husband, you know, how am I going to protect my baby? You know, and you know, she's got, you know, six more years until she can actually have a gas mask of her own. So I'm not sure. Sure, we could save my husband and I's life, but how am I going to protect my baby? You know, there's all these things that are running through my mind about this. And, you know, sure, I can spend the 300 or so dollars and get that baby bubble thing. Um, and that could last for a little while. But, you know, it, it's, it's all an investment. It's all an investment. And the filters and things expire. They do. So you have to throw them out eventually and buy new filters. And it's just, you know, something that you have to do. It's kind of like rotating your food. You know, you have to know when they expire and get new filters. But of course, regardless whether you have gas masks or not, um, every single prepper ever should have these potassium iodide uh, tablets. And uh, this, I got this last year, uh, 2016, and it has an expiration of 2021. So pretty good. And so every single prepper should have these at least um, you know, read the directions, know how and when to use them. Um, I know it says, I know it's kind of weird how and when, but, uh, you know, it has all the directions here at the bottom and everything. So definitely get some of these, you know, a, a couple of these packets is good enough. So I'm going to be torn for a while. Um, I'm torn because I can't properly protect, uh, my baby, um, unless I buy that, uh, baby bubble. And I can't protect my dogs unless I buy those uh, dog crates. Um, so it's just a couple things to keep in mind. You know, what about the elderly, people with disabilities, et cetera, et cetera, you know. Um, and especially for children with gas masks, it is harder for children to breathe in gas masks in general. So you have to be aware of that as well. So there's just all these things to consider when it comes to gas masks and, um, it's like I'm sold on the idea of having the gas mask, but I'm not sold on actually buying them yet just because there's, you know, um, I don't know. There's just a lot of things to consider. Let me know your thoughts on gas masks. I love to hear them. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you later. Bye.